Hello and welcome back with the RT Mummy Art Fundamentals number two observation and shading. And today we're going to draw a cup, and I've just really quickly done a little couple of sketches to give you an idea of some things to look out for. Um, the edges, the outer part of your ellipses should not come to a point and they should be more round on the bottom part of the cup if you're looking from this angle and the width of, the, of your ellipse from one side to the other should also be equal and um, also keep an eye on your top to bottom ratios if the cup's straight up and down don't be scared to use a ruler to get your, um, get your sides straight your vertical line should be vertical um, measure if you have to it's really easy to end up with a distorted looking object by just not getting those lines quite vertical um, again watching the shape of your ellipse you can end up with a really sort of oblong kind of shape going on it's not quite the same as the cup so observation 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 um, really really pay attention to the shape of your object and it helps to just have a really good look at it before you even start turn it around in your hand have a look and see how light reflects off it you don't have to first time around use a transparent cup um, any old cup will do the simple of the shape the better if you're um, newer to drawing but this is really an ex exercise in observation and shading so we're going to dive right in I think now you can use um, your pencil as you can see me doing to check on your um, proportions if you have a proportional divide proportional divider is that what it's called <laughs> um, I actually have one hiding somewhere but uh, I wanted to keep these um, videos really really simple so that anybody at all can do them and not feel like they have to have any kind of really special equipment um, later on I will be using a blending pencil but a paper pl blending stump will be fine as well so we're just going very very light with the HB pencil I've only got two pencils by the way there's the same as I did yesterday the HB and the 6B to get the different um, range of tone also I'm just showing, slowing down here to show you that that ellipse in the bottom of the cup if you're doing a, a non-transparent cup still draw that in in your initial sketching because that helps you to make sure that you've got your shape right and you can just rub it out later if you're not doing a transparent cup so just very very lightly um, so that you can rub out any mistakes and check on things before you get too heavy and get any kind of marks on your page that you're not going to be able to take off again and just really spend your time being very very observant pay really close attention to where the light hits your object um, where it might be shiny and just try and pop some marks in there that'll help you to guide you through where all these um, shapes are going to be it can be also very useful to look at your negative shapes which is the area around the shape that you're um, trying to draw that can go for the highlights and shadows as well as the full shape of the actual object um, so break it down into parts and really observe each minute detail as much as you can if you want to get into a um, my brain has just gone out the window um, if you really want to get into realism type drawing now this cup has been in my fam like my mum's kitchen and now my kitchen for as long as I can remember it's been in daily use it finally got chipped not that long ago I think it once belonged to Nana um, I was starting beginning to think it was completely indestructible it's been dropped so many times and bumped on things and I thought oh, it's gonna go this time and it just it's been around forever and in daily use it's one of my favorite coffee cups 
so I decided to use this one to draw so once you've got your uh, cup in, um, in your basic shapes in very 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 lightly shade over the, the whole thing apart from your lightest highlights and um, that'll give you just a, a base tone to work on it's much better to work in many very light layers than try to go too hard too fast and find that you've made a mistake not sponsored but I do love it it is a Prismacolor colorless blending pencil uh, it says PC1077 I'm not quite sure that went, what that means but um, it works really well to just really make your colours come out vibrant with coloured pencil and um, really can darken up your um, graphite pencils it just, it just blends really well um, an ordinary blending stamp will work just fine as well though you just might have to go with one or two more layers to get that really good depth of um, tone happening or possibly a darker pencil but for everybody's purposes at the moment like I said I'm trying to keep it just nice and really simple um, with the materials so that absolutely anybody um, can draw without having to have any special equipment I've got an ordinary school pencil and ordinary school rubber um, a blending stump will work well and you just just get in there and practice observe now a lot of people would pull up around this sort of stage even or a tiny bit further don't be afraid to really keep going with the layers and really get some darker tones in there I love when artworks have the full range if you if your tonal range only goes maybe three or four steps your paintings or your drawings or whatever you're working on isn't going to have a big impact um, unless you're specifically going for a very very soft look if if you want to have impact you need to really get that good range of um, tonal values happening in your work and um, sketching is a good way to get in with a, a good habit of getting those darker colors in there and being a bit brave with them so even with this transparent glass I've got full black around the room there because the way the light hits the, the smoked glass it makes a very very dark tone so make sure that you are true to what you're looking at and even you can slightly exaggerate if you feel it needs a little bit more impact and depending on what style you're going for but I've tried to go quite true to what I'm seeing here for, for the realism, sake of realism always remember to draw what you see not what you think you see so always refer back to your reference and make sure that you're you're drawing exactly what you actually are seeing because it's very easy to um, I'm not quite sure how to explain it uh, we tend to draw how we think something should be and then if you actually look at the reference you'll find it's not true to the object it's it's a really strange thing the brain does to us so um, a big big lesson in drawing I, I say to my um, my students that go to my classes observation 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 look at everything with an artist's eye and make a real habit of it um, I do it constantly now um, if I'm walking down the road I'm looking at the shrubs and the trees and the um, and the houses and the people even and just and noticing the different variations of um, tonal values that uh, say in the outer to inner leaves of a shrub or um, in the shadow versus the sunlight um, 
next to a park bench or just the, the most mundane things can become really fascinating when you start to look at them with an artist's eye and um, and try to observe the actual colors and you know, how would I mix that color if I was trying to mix it with paint um, how would I draw that if I was trying to draw it what um, what depth of tone would I have to put in there to get that to look like that on a canvas or on paper um, and if you start to make a habit of that it, um, it just really improves your observation skills in general um, look at the shapes of objects and the shapes around objects um, um, yeah it's just it's just kind of the way my brain works these days now because I've just made such a, a full-on habit of it but um, as you can see I'm starting to get some of the darker tones in here now with that 6B pencil and just again though a very light touch with the pencil it's all about adding layers and um, really paying attention to to what you're looking at um, I apologize for my voice I'm very very croaky tonight I hope I'm not coming down with a virus or something Ugh. it's like hay fever and croakiness Ugh. anyway <laughs> um, so yeah as I was saying really pay attention to what you see and not what you think you see and guilty of it right here in my reference that light shining down the front of the cup was not there um, I was adding it in because I felt like it should be there or like I should be putting some kind of reflection down the front to um, help the glass effect and later on you'll see that I I take most of it out because it just it wasn't true to what I was looking at and in the end it looked better without it because it, it really wasn't there so um, yeah depending on if you're going for something stylized or whatever but for realism um, very very much try to stay true to what you actually see and be very very observant with even the finest little details and um, you will artwork will drastically improve because of it you just layers and layers and layers with a light touch can't stress that enough um, if you try to go heavy and you make a mistake it's so much harder to fix <laughs> so um, yes also pay attention with especially with glass and reflections and looking through glass you can see that um, very definite line that was created in the reflection of the um, horizon line or the fold in the paper that I set the glass in front of um, it made quite a definite um, curve upwards around the glass and if I was drawing that out of my head I probably would have put it actually like the other way up maybe um, but drawing it exactly as I observed it it, um, it turned out pretty good in the end I think so yeah, but definitely pay attention to those reflections where they actually are how um, how the glass distorts what's behind it water will also do that but I didn't want to complicate this too much by actually putting anything in the glass um, I also didn't have any kind of bright or direct light shining on it to to make the shadows really complicated um, I keep repeating myself but yeah a lot of that reflection that I've got in the front of the glass will disappear shortly because I realize it really doesn't belong there um, I could have improved this quite a bit more um, with a better eraser um, to really bring out those highlights that little one out of my kids um, pencil case is not wonderful um, or also if you reach a stage where you kind of can't get back to your white paper a lot of people use um, a white marker to really bring out the brightest highlights 
So this could have possibly been improved by bringing out the really, really shiny parts, which I didn't very do very much. But I think you kind of get the idea of how to start building up with layers. Um, so layer, blend, layer, blend, observe, observe, observe. Um, attention to detail. And uh, your drawings will come out perfect. Well, not perfect. Make mistakes. Make lots of them. Um, I've made thousands and thousands over the years. Um, eventually, though, it pays off. Absolutely. And the joy that you get while you're practicing and when you're creating something beautiful after all your years of practice or for those very talented, wonderful people that can just pick up a pencil and draw anything. Um, I have uh, a couple of students that sort of came in and within only a few lessons they were producing really lovely work. So, um, you know, whatever stage you're at, don't compare yourself to other people. Compare your work to your previous work. And um, pay attention to the detail. Pay attention to the light and your tonal values. Do your shading in layers if you're working in pencil. Um, and w work in many light layers rather than a few heavy layers and your work will improve in no time. Oh, and I just had an idea for the um, tomorrow's video. I think tomorrow we are going to make a tonal value finder card that can be extremely useful in um, stopping your eyes from tricking you so quite often when you're doing work like this you can have trouble finding your tonal values and um, tone is so um, what's the word relative <laughs> very very relative that's why a lot of artists say you know don't start on a white canvas always Put a mid-tone on it because without the mid-tone you can't judge your lights and your darks because your darks will seem a lot to be a lot darker than they are against a white surface and you will have trouble reaching your, your full range of values that you should have in your work and the same sort of thing applies in even this kind of work especially where your eyes can really really trick you and what you think should be like a mid-tone might actually be quite light or quite dark depending on what it's next to so if you have a value checker which is really so easy to make you don't have to go out and buy one then you can just hold that up to your reference or your object see where it lines up on your value checker and then Put that up to your work and you'll soon see whether you are good or not with your um, guess of what the actual value is when you're putting it down on your on your work it's an extremely helpful tool um, and eventually we'll get into a similar version only with color as well so that can, you can better judge what you're looking at because our eyes trick us so much depending on what we're looking at. And with that in mind also, going back to what I was saying before about um, sort of observing the world around you as you get around in your daily life, like walking down the road or going to the park or that kind of thing. Also really pay attention if you're, um, especially if you're into landscape painting or drawing, um, pay attention to different times of day and how that affects the various things that you look at so if you walk to the park with the kids 
first thing in the morning and um, and come back around lunchtime just as you're walking just look at the objects around you and see how the light changes and how that affects things um, well, again with trees things like how do branches attach to the trunk because when you sit down and try to draw that or paint it it can be a challenge for a lot of people to go oh, how does that actually look um, so making a habit of observation of different kinds of trees and shrubs different kinds of fencing or um, clothing or whatever you happen to be looking at and how the light of different times of day affected it's like endlessly fascinating for me um, maybe I'm just really boring art geek <laughs> but um, it's when, once you sort of get those ideas sort of stuck in your head in a, a habitual way um, it just it completely changes the way you, you view almost everything Oh, look at the way the light reflects on those leaves <laughs> you find yourself t um, telling yourself these things in your head all the time like oh look at that and look at that um, oh look, look at the reflections of color in that shadow <laughs> um, oh I could have so much fun painting that with all the different colors um, really making a habit of really properly looking at things in just everyday life is a, a great advantage in your art practice and it costs nothing and it takes no um, nothing out of your day it takes no time it's just for, for me it actually makes mundane things more enjoyable because I get to put all this inspiration into my head everywhere I go, no matter what I'm doing or where I am. Um, yeah, it's it's something that, yeah, I'm a geek. <laughs> I'm an art geek. <laughs> so, anyway, if you have any questions at all about this video, um, please hit down below and send me, send me a message. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. I would really love to hear from you. Thank you so, so, so much for watching today. And um, I've really enjoyed having you here with me. Love to see you again tomorrow for some tonal value learning. And um, I hope you enjoy my cup. Let me know how you went with yours. Have a fabulous day. Bye-bye for now.